Yesterday we kept talking about, we started our lesson of course, which, which was about, about uh, about Yes, it was about, first, the entire lesson was about what? Not uh, yesterday's lesson, system. it was about the ego system. And we said, let's review together some of the most important scientific uh, terms that we started in this lesson, uh, which was, number one, Ecosystem. Right? We started with the ecosystem. ecosystem. Alright, who can remind me what is the ecosystem? Uh, ecosystem is, uh, is the living thing and non living uh, thing and the weather condition and uh, the place. Hmm. So it's the living things and the non living things in? <coughs> the place. In an area yeah. and there? Weather condition. And their interaction. And their what? Interaction. Interaction. So the ecosystem is any, is all the living organisms and the non living things in an area and their what, Michelle? Their interactions. How they interact with each other. Okay? Alright. Then we studied that every ecosystem is made up of communities. It's made up of what? Communities of living organisms. So we said that it has communities of living organisms. So what is the community? Mandy? Community? Uh, means population live, uh, live, 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 live. In, in the same in, in the same place or in the same ecosystem. But you said population or population. Do you say did you say population? Just one population? Or no, population, many populations? Many populations. Many populations. Alright. So all the living organisms, all the living organisms that live in an area, uh, they are called a community. They make up what? A community. All the living things that live in an area or in an ecosystem make up a community. All right. And Mahdi said that all this, uh, one community is made up of just one population or many populations? Many populations. So, what is a population? Sherry? A group of animals that are from the same kind. So a population is what again mentioned Sherry? Huh? A group of animals that are from the same kind. It's a group of animals, just animals? We Not say a group of living organisms of the same kind. It's one group or a group of the same kind of living organisms. Of the same kind of what of living yeah, organisms. <coughs> These living organisms, they live in the ecosystem, right? In places, in physical places of the ecosystem. So we say that the physical part of the ecosystem is called what? Habitat. A habitat. So what is a habitat? A habitat is Abrahman. Habitat is the place where it gives the animals their needs like water and food and uh, <coughs> shelter. Excellent. So a habitat is what is the physical part of the ecosystem that meets all the needs of the living organism. That meets all the needs of the living organism, such as food, shelter, water, water and space to live. Space to live. Alright? So these are the most important <laughs> fact, uh, terms that we studied last lesson. And also there is another thing that every organism has something called river, niche. It's called a niche. And what is a niche river? Excellent. It's like its role. Its role. The animals or the living organisms role or job in the ecosystem. For example, we said that green plants, they can make their own food, right? Yeah. So their job or their role is that they are producers. Excellent. They are what? Producers. What about animals that eat plants? Huh? What is their niche? What is their niche? Grass. Consumers. They are what? Consumers. They consume plants, all right? What about the fungi and the bacteria? We saw the fungi and the bacteria before. They are, they are what? They are, they are decomposers. They are called what? They are called decomposers. Some living organisms, we said some organisms have what? Niche. 
but others have said inch. Mm -hmm. Some living organisms have wide niche and narrow niche. Okay, so some living organisms have wide niches and others have narrow niches. So which ones, which one of these organisms will, will live and survive in an ecosystem better than the other? Uh, the, the, the organisms that have wide niche. Do you know what's the meaning of, remember what's the meaning of, or what's the difference between an organism that has a wide niche and an organism that has a narrow niche? Ahmed? A wide niche uh, is uh, that the, he could eat everything. Right so the, that organism, it can, it can feed on many things, mm -hmm. or it has many sources of food. Of food. Okay? It has many sources of food, many different kinds of food. But the organisms that have narrow niche, they have what? Limited food. Limited source of food. They have a limited source of food. That's why the organisms that have wide niche can survive. Kasif can survive better than the organisms that have what? That mm. have narrow niche. All right. Today we will continue about the different living organisms that live in, in an ecosystem. All right. But now let's see how the living organisms are diversified. How they are diversified. What's the meaning of diversified? Diversified like what are the different species of living organisms that can be found in an ecosystem? And we have a small number of species living in an ecosystem like the desert ecosystem or do we have a large number of species living in an ecosystem like the rainy yeah. forests, like the rainy forests, the temperate rainy forests, okay? Uh, or, or the, or the, uh, the, yes, the rainy forests in Africa. Huh. Which ones have larger number of populations? All right, let's together, let's watch this video quickly. Try to remind ourselves with what we studied and continue on. We learn about the parts of an ecosystem. We we'll also find out about how living things. Do you think you could grow tomatoes on the moon? Well, probably not, unless you made an environment for plants there that included water, air, and nutrients. Imagine that you need to colonize the moon and you want to be able to grow some fruits and vegetables in a moon garden. Besides water, air, and nutrients, what other things would you need to make a healthy and natural vegetable garden? Click the hot edit area in the image to get some ideas. When done, click the next button to begin your voyage of discovery through some of our planet's many ecosystems. So, this part is telling you what exactly. Can you grow some tomatoes and some bees, some, some mushrooms, or some of these flowers on the moon? No, no. no. Because the moon the conditions on the moon are not suitable. The conditions of the moon are not good enough. Yes, because it doesn't have water, oxygen, doesn't have air. Only oxygen or also carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Ah, yes. Soil. It doesn't have soil. Ah, it doesn't have fertile soil that we can plant plants in them. And the rest is the and it doesn't have a uh, habitat, a good habitat for all of these plants to grow. So that's why we said that the habitat is very important for the living organisms. Why, Ahmed? Because, uh, yes, because the habitat meets all the needs, all the needs of what? Of the living organisms. Okay. Many corals may love it. Do you think you could grow tomatoes on the moon? Do you know what a coral is? Is it a plant or an animal? Many corals may look like plants, but they are actually tiny animals. They live in coral reefs. 
A coral reef is a place in warm, shallow ocean water where many different kinds of animals live. More than 1,500 different kinds of fish live around Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Sea turtles, such as the one you see here, often live in and around coral reefs too. So, what is the number that you mentioned here? You was talking about what? Yes, 1,500. Yes, 1,500 what? Coral. 1,500? Kinds of fish. Kinds of fish. So, he gave you an example, a very important example. <coughs> there are different, large number of different species of fish that live in just one ecosystem. In the Australian coral reef, he told you that there are, there are about 1,500 different kinds of fish that live in just one ecosystem, in just one ecosystem. Imagine the number of, or the diversity, you know the diversity? What's the meaning of the word diversity? Diversity means, the word diversity means, yes, excellent, many different kinds. So the word diversity means many different kinds. All right? So there are many different kinds of living organisms that live all over the world. Thousands and hundreds and hundreds of thousands, okay? But here, for example, he gave us an example of the coral reefs. The fish that live around the Australian coral reef, there, there are about 1,500 different kinds of fish living in this area, living in this area. All right. I want you to start reading, if you will, start reading the first paragraph, the first page, page 254, together. And after you read, everyone, you can read it alone for five minutes, and after you read, I want you to pick up your pen and your white paper and start generating some of the ideas, the most important ideas, and the most important ideas in your uh, in this stage. In this stage. Yes. Yes, group work. But first you have to read it. First alone. First read it alone. Work together. Read it alone first for about two minutes. Then, then start generating ideas as a group. Start generating ideas as a group. Take the entire thing. 254. It's a long page.
now you can start generating some ideas together. Start working on some ideas together. Can I stop this for a little bit? Yes. Just use simple words and simple sentences. Start generating some ideas together. Discuss the ideas together. Discuss them and write them. Discuss them and write them. First read, then discuss, then write them. Write what you agree upon together in your notebook. Write together. Write together. Okay. Pick the most important concepts in this part. Okay. What is the what is the best? Why is the best is important?
first concept, the first concept here that you learn from this and faith is the meaning of the word what is the meaning of the word diversity. The meaning of the word what diversity. And diversity means many different kinds or different in Christ. Okay. Then you also learn what why diversity is important. Why the diversity is important? Can you tell me why diversity is important? Yeah. Hmm. Diversity is important because all organisms rely on other organisms. Because all of the organisms rely on other organisms. Okay. Can anyone tell me what is the meaning of that? <laughs> Let's use another one from another group. Ishari? Their interactions and their relationships. Excellent. Their interactions and their relationship. So, so the word rely means they depend. they depend on each other. They depend on each other. Like how the zebras depend on the grass. Because the zebras cannot live without grass or plants that they eat. How the, her, uh, sorry, the carnivores, like uh, tigers and lions, they need what? They need uh, the, the zebras or the deer or the grass eaters to eat them. So they depend on each other or rely on each other. Okay, any other idea? Uh, uh, I repeat the meaning of the diversity of the world. All right. Any other ideas here, Suleiman? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. We know that diversity is the variety of different species that live in ecosystems. Yes. So, so you want to say that diversity is like the variety? It's like the variety of different living organisms or species that live in an ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Suleiman. This group, this group, Abdurrahman, stand up and tell us what else did you learn from this? What is, what is the meaning of diversity? Anything else? Yes, this is a new thing. What, what's an ecosystem that is diverse contains? It contains what? When we say that this ecosystem is diverse, we say it contains what? Contains just one kind or few kinds of species of living organisms or many kinds of species of living organisms? Many? Or one, just one kind? Many kinds of species of living organisms. Any other ideas? Why is the diversity important? Why the diversity is important, okay? Why the diversity is important in an ecosystem? And we said this with the other group, with the first group. Why? Because rely rely huh, on or, or on each other or the level of it depend on each other thank you thank you very much yes Muhammad mm -hmm. I learned ecosystem need diversity ecosystems need diversity ecosystems need diversity because if there are if there is no diversity Muhammad what will happen to the ecosystem so if there is no enough diversity in the ecosystem, can, it, can, can, it, can we say that this ecosystem is diverse enough? No. Does it have enough kinds of living organisms that no. living inside them? So, so they, these, these living organisms, they tend not to survive a long time. They tend to die after a few years, and uh, this ecosystem will not survive, okay? Uh, any other ideas? Yeah, diversity mm -hmm. means different kinds. And, uh, and I learned diverse, diversity is the variety of different, different species that live in an ecosystem. And ecosystem is the uh, ecosystem that is diverse contains a lot of species and systems without much diversity are inhabited by only a few species. Yes. Thank you, Thank you very much. Here, let's go to the school. Let's go to the school. I learned what's the meaning of diversity. Diversity is the variety of different species that live in an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I learned if there is no diversity, uh, there is no diversity, we will not be healthy for a long time. Mm -hmm. And without much diversity, uh, we are inhabited by only a few species. Excellent. So, without much diversity, the ecosystem is inhabited only by just a few kinds, just a few species. Alright? But, thank you very much, guys. But, let's, let's 
see some of the examples of diversity in some of the ecosystems, like here. Let's watch this part. In a desert, what about a tropical rainforest? Due to climate, some ecosystems have more diversity. How many kinds of organisms would you find in a desert? What about a tropical rainforest? Due to climate, some ecosystems have more diversity. That means there are more kinds of organisms in a given area. Ecosystems near the equator often have more diversity. Diversity of ecosystems tends to decrease closer to Earth's pole. Click each image to learn more. All right. So sometimes some ecosystems have less diversity than others, right? But others, Khaled, others have more diversity than these ecosystems. For example, here in the desert, let's see. Do you expect that the desert has more diversity, more no. kinds of living organisms, no, no, or no. less kinds of living no, organisms? Less, less, less. less. Why? Because the weather conditions in this ecosystem doesn't allow for many kinds of living organisms to grow and live there. Let's watch. A desert like the Sahara gets very little rainfall, so plants and animals must survive with little or no water. <coughs> the diversity of plant life is low compared to weather ecosystems. But you can find plants like date palms and desert shrubs. There is much more diversity of animal life, especially birds and reptiles. Animals as small as ants to as large as gazelles survive in the harsh environment too. Many animals rest during the heat of the day and are active at night. So here uh, in the desert ecosystem, we have what? More diversity in plants or more diversity in animals? Plants. Yeah. In animals or plants? Uh, in animals. Why? Because here in the, in the desert conditions, there is no, not much diversity in plants because there is too little rain. And most of the time uh, of the year, the, 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 the soil itself is dry. And the, the conditions of the weather, like the temperature, is hot most of the day, right? And it can be very cold at night. So the temperature changes very much. The plants don't grow. Not, not much kind, not many kinds of plants grow can grow in the desert environment or in the desert ecosystem. But in animals, can the animals survive these, these conditions? Yeah. Yes, they can. Animals as small as ants or reptiles or even as big as a camel they can survive these desert conditions. That's why there is more diversity in animals than in plants. River? Excellent. Excellent. This is a, a, an excellent application of niches. Because here, like animals that live here in the desert, they have a narrow niche. What is the kind of food that this camel eats? Uh, just grass. grass, just some grass, that the grass that he can find in his way, right, in its way, right? So it has a narrow niche, but if we look here at a tropical, tropical savanna, for example, a trop or a tropical Tropical rainforest. savannas are found near the equator, but they aren't as diverse as tropical rainforests. This is because savannas are dry for part of the year, and they often have high temperatures. Scattered clumps of trees are found in tropical savannas. Anna? So, huh, here in tropical savannas, they have more diversity or less diversity than the desert. More, more than their diversity than the desert. But what about when we compare them to the rainforests? Temperate rainforests, such as those found in the Pacific Northwest, have a lot of diversity. This is because these forests get lots of rain and temperatures are moderate. There are so it depends on two factors. Huh. What and what? It rain, depends on yes, rain, rain and, temperature. and temperature. So the diversity of the living organisms almost depends on what? Uh, rain and temperature. and temperature. In the desert, the temperature is hot most of the year. And the amount of rain is very, very little. In the tropical savannas, it's hot, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's dry part of the year. Uh, and the temperature is a little bit hot. But there is more diversity here in the tropical savanna than the desert. What about the rainy forests? The rainy forests, the temperature is temperate. What does it mean temperate? It means moderate, moderate temperature. And there is too much rain here in the uh, rainy forest. That's why there are many living organisms that can live there. Because as you can see here, there are high trees, high trees that can harbor 
or become a habitat for many kinds of birds and animals and insects and reptiles and, and uh, they can live inside these trees or around them and the large number of different kinds of plants so there are diversity, large diversity there's a large diversity in plant life and also in animal life where in the simple the thing, resources for the trees, bears, elk, wolves and other organisms in these forests let's go back again to another ecosystem that has like for example, the tundra the tundra. Are very little diversity temperatures are cold and tundra and some can be very dry. In fact, temperatures are so cold that below a certain depth, the ground is frozen year-round. During summer, only a thin surface layer of soil thaws. Small plants that can handle cold temperatures and animals such as caribou, musk oxen, and wolves live on tundra. So here in the tundra, it's like the opposite of which kind of these ecosystems? The desert. The desert. It's the opposite of the desert. The desert is very hot most of the year, very, very hot, and there's too little rain, and it's very, very dry, and it's very dry, and, but here in the tundra, it's extremely cool, extremely cool, and the ground is frozen most of the year, or all year, all year long, only a thin layer of soil, we can find a thin layer of soil here in the tundra. And it's dry also most of the year. And the, the, so the diversity of the living organisms living in the tundra is high diversity or just small amount, small numbers of living organisms. Oh, oh, no, not high diversity. Oh, low yeah. diversity because the conditions are very harsh. They are not as beautiful as these conditions here, like here in the rainy forest. Yes, because here extremely cold. Here <coughs> extremely cold. Look, at, let's look at the tropical now rainy forest. Tropical rainforests are the most diverse ecosystems on Earth. These ecosystems are found near the equator, so they have plenty of rain and warm temperatures. Tropical rainforests are home to thousands of species of birds, trees, and other plants. Most animals, from monkeys to frogs and insects, live in the tree trunks, making them very hard to see. Yes. So, in the tropical rainforests, they do what? They are the most diversified ecosystems in the world, okay? And contain the largest number of living organisms, of different kinds of living organisms, species, that live in the world where they can live here in the tropical rainforest. They can live in the homes of the world, they can live inside the trees or on the trees, okay? So, because the conditions here, the weather conditions and the amount of water, the green life, the plants, all of them become suitable enough for all of these animals to grow. Let's go to the last one, the temperate uh, grasslands. Temperate grasslands are not as diverse as tropical rainforests, but they're more diverse than hunters. Temperate grasslands get some rainfall, but not enough to support a lot of trees. Fires on these grasslands also prevent the growth of trees. Grazing animals, such as bison, are found in temperate grasslands. Small seed eaters, such as mice, are also common. Now, let's try a seed. Just like any other living thing, humans are part of ecosystems. So, we as humans, we are part of what? Of the ecosystem, right? All right. Do we have an effect on the ecosystem? Uh, yeah. Do we have an effect on the ecosystem? Yeah. Yes, we affect the ecosystem, right? Yeah. All right. I want you to think about the effect of the ecosystem for tomorrow's session, inshallah. Okay? The effect of humans on the ecosystem, like human activities, our new activities, like in this age, in this day and age, we have what? We have a Dutch, uh, sorry, an, uh, a manufacturing revolution. Okay? We, can, we have factories everywhere, we have technology, we have many activities. Let's think and read and study for so tomorrow session, inshallah, about the effect of the human on the ecosystem. Is it positive effect or is it a negative effect? Is it good or is it bad? Okay? Now open your books to page 256. Together, start, start answering. 256 and start answering. Yes, group one together. Start answering page 256. Question one and question two. Yes, group one. Who is the main 
biotic and uh, abiotic. Biotic and abiotic. Biotic meaning? Excellent. Excellent. So the biotic uh, comes from the word bio, comes from the word bio, and bio means life. In what life? The word bio means life. When I say biotic, biotic means living. Part of an the word abiotic, huh? abiotic, it's like you are saying none, it's like you are saying what none. Abiotic means the non-living part, or the non-living thing, the non-living part of any Like what? Like soil. Like water, like rocks. Rocks or Like the sun. <laughs> All right, Sulaiman. So the words in the oval describe parts of a desert ecosystem. Draw lines to show whether each part is a biotic or an abiotic part. Now, the cactus. Biotic or abiotic? Biotic, very nice. The rattlesnake? Biotic. Mandy? Sandy soil? Abiotic. The lizard? Biotic. Little water? Abiotic. Same. Abiotic. Sunlight? Abiotic. Now, very nice. Complete or fill in the plants with the words from the word box. Use each word once, only once. An organelle includes all of the living and non-living things that surround and affect the organism. Jacob, environment. The environment, yes. Uh, number two, what is an area made up of biotic and abiotic factors when an organism interacts? Sorry, where organisms interact. Talent? Ecosystem. Excellent. Within these areas, groups of the same species of organisms or passing population. Excellent. Interact with each other with other organisms. Forming large, forming a large, yes, Abdurrahman. Community. Forming a large community. Excellent, Abdurrahman. Ah. Finally, the, uh, uh, the place where uh, an organism normally lives is called a fishery habitat. The way the organisms live there is called a net. Thank you very much, guys. See you inshallah tomorrow. Thank you very much. Uh, as we said, next, next uh, session inshallah tomorrow, we will start with lesson two. How do environmental changes affect the organisms? And I want you to research, I want you to research what? Uh, research what? The human or the effect of human activities on the ecosystem. The effects of the human activities on the ecosystem. Thank you very much.